Good afternoon, everybody. Christine Barconi here in the NBC4 Ice Streaming Center, and we're trying something new today. We're going to be doing a live cooking demo ahead of Valentine's Day, bringing in one of the top guys here in the Ohio area. They've got restaurants in Cincinnati, Columbus, and I believe Louisville as well, the Kentucky area from Jeff Ruby's Steakhouse. We have Chef Nick Ellison joining us to show us how to make some surf and turf. And I saw some pictures earlier of what you guys have done there. Uh, Chef Nick, uh, it looks amazing. Tell us what we have going on here. You guys are in your kitchen there in Cincinnati. Absolutely. Uh, first off, thanks for having us on. Um, yeah, we're going to be doing a Valentine's Day meal kit. Um, just so everybody knows, you can start those pre-orders right now. Uh, so you can go online to jeffruby.com and start ordering those as of today. We've got a link um, in our website can... right now as well. Awesome. And then, um, yeah, the pickup for this kit starts on the 12th, and then you can pick it up the 12th, 13th, and the 14th on Valentine's Day. Uh, it's a meal kit for two. It is a surf and turf like you uh, mentioned. It's going to be um, two filet mignons, and then uh, the turf surf of that would be our two seven, eight ounce lobster tails, and then plenty of sides, dessert, breads, butter, uh, appetizers, anything you could think. So it's plenty of food. Uh, that's at $200. That's actually a really good pricing. You don't even have to do the grocery shopping for what you are um, getting there. So you're going to show us how to cook it. What would be the first thing that you need to get going if you're trying to have everything come out on time? Absolutely. So the first thing, the first thing uh, that I would do is get your steaks out. Uh, so they come individually cryback packaged, and I just had those sitting out for a little bit, um, you know, 30 minutes to an hour, uh, and you just let those come up to room temp or right uh, – you know, right under room temp. Um, we want those dry as possible. So I have a little towel here and I'm just gonna take these steaks and I'm gonna get these as dry as possible. That's when we put our seasoning onto the steaks. You don't want the, you don't want the moisture from the steaks uh, meant uh, getting with the uh, seasoning that we use. Um, wet is not good when you're trying to get a hard crust or a sear on a steak. Well, I've so already we learned something new today. Possible. Yeah, I got my pan. Uh, I'm using cast iron. Any skill works fine. I love cast iron. It holds heat well. Uh, you know, you get heat from the, all the way to the middle, all the, all the way to the sides. A um, little bit of canola in here. And we'll just let that pan start heating up a little bit. So really, you want to look at that oil. Uh, your oil will go in. It'll be uh, a little viscous. And then once it starts heating up, you'll see that it starts uh, clearing up a little bit. Uh, gets a little more runny in there, and then that's when you know your oil's heating up. I also like to take a little seasoning and just sprinkle it in there. You know your oil's cold if that doesn't pop or anything, but as you can see, once it starts heating up, it'll start popping, and that's about when we want to put our steaks in the pan. Okay. So we're just about there. So I see you guys have asparagus as well, and this meal kit comes with potatoes and so mashed potatoes and a dessert. But do you have to cook those, or do those come pre-cooked? So they come uh, par cooked. So we actually make the mashed potatoes, um, and then when you get them to your house, uh, just heat them up on the stove with a just a touch of milk in there uh, to help loosen them up. And then the asparagus, these pans that we have here, the black and gold pans that come in the kit, mm -hmm. uh, those are actually. Uh, oven safe. Oh. So you just take that par blanched asparagus, a uh, nice bright green color, and you just toss that with a little oil, uh, some of our steak seasoning, uh, and then pop that right in the oven. Okay. Super easy. Nice. So I'm going to start searing these steaks here a little bit. Both sides, you want plenty of seasoning on both sides. It's just starting to smoke now, so I'm going to turn this down. And you hear that right there? That's what you want to hear every time. That seasoning won't stick to your pan. It'll stay on the steak. And it's going to be a beautiful, nice golden brown crust. Awesome. So people who are joining us on Facebook, we want to thank you guys for watching and being with us right now. Leave some comments. Let us know where you guys are watching from. And if you guys have any questions, any cooking questions um, for Chef here, it's a good opportunity to, to ask him. So let us know where you're watching from in the comments and then ask uh, Chef Nick Ellison your questions. All right, so how long um, do you, does it take to cook these steaks? Not long, right? You don't want to overcook them. That would be the worst sin ever. Absolutely, yeah. You never want to overcook the, the steak. But 
in the pan right here, I'm going to do about uh, two to two and a half minutes on each side. Um, once I flip them over, I actually like to throw that in the oven. That kind of just speeds up the process a little bit. Okay. But you can flip these over and they'll start searing on the bottom and then I'll pop them into a 425 degree oven. Awesome. And I know you guys um, have started doing these meal kits over quarantine, right? And so uh, they've been a real hit. Can you tell us about those? Absolutely. They've been a huge hit. So most of our meal kits that you can get from uh, uh, six of the seven locations, um, typically they're meal kits for four, so uh, four, four family. Um, but it's mostly our steaks, uh, raw steaks. You take them home. It's a grill at home kit. And then a lot of the same things that you see here, some of our asparagus, some you know, the Freddy salad, um, our, our classic Jeff Ruby mac and cheese, uh, and then some desserts and some, and uh, bread and butter and all of that. So a full meal, they've been a huge hit. Uh, we're, we're super happy uh, with their success. Awesome. Um, so you get the, the steaks and the sides as well. Um, Honestly, sometimes I feel like making those sides and coming up with what will go with a steak or something like that is sometimes the hardest part of a meal. So you guys kind of take the guesswork out of that. Definitely. Yeah, and we, and we part bake it. So, you know, everything that you're getting, uh, picking up from us, it's super easy steps. And then we have some great preparation instructions always in every kit. Um, so it, it's super easy and we make it, uh, you know, as simple as it can be to cook at home. Oh my gosh, so there's a amazing. beautiful char on those. These are actually some nice G1, uh, eight ounce fillets each. So a nice pound of fillets in each. I'm actually going to take these and throw these in the oven at 425. Okay. For how long? Uh, depending on what temperature you want, uh, you're looking at uh, a mid rare at 425. You're looking at about six to eight minutes, somewhere in there. If you go up to medium, I would, uh, you know, about two minutes on each temperature that you want to go up. Well, what do you uh, timing recommend? Timing is tough. Ovens are, are, ovens are all different. The, the yeah. best way to do it really is to get a thermometer and stick it in the center of that fillet. Okay. Uh, truly to know what temperature you're looking at. And what, what internal temperature do you recommend? Uh, I would recommend a medium rare plus. That's kind of our house temperature, especially for a fillet. Mm -hmm. And you're looking at about 135 to 140. Uh, the good thing about the temperatures in our instructions for the kit we lay all the temperatures out with the corresponding degrees. So it's super easy and you can check in there when you get the kit. And you can get one of those meat thermometers really anywhere and they're super cheap, right? Absolutely. It's a good tool yep. to have in your house anyway. Definitely. All right, what so else I'm gonna do you start have for on us? the lobster tails. Okay. You ready for that? Yeah. Um, so we have two cold water Canadian lobster tails here. Again, the black and gold pan, uh, pop right in the oven, it's bakeable. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a touch of water in here. Uh, that's just to help steam the tails. Um, it, it lessens the heat a little bit and it makes the, the lobster meat turn out a little more tender at the end. Um, so we pop a little um, water in the bottom. And then I have some house made herb butter which will come with the kit. That goes right down the middle of the tails. Um, not in the instructions, but at home. I like to put a little bit of the ruby seasoning right on top. People were asking in the comments, they're asking if that seasoning does come with the kit, and it does, and I didn't know about the butter as well, so that's good. Absolutely, yes. You get a, you get a two and a half to three ounce seasoning tin with the kit. Um, plenty, like I just showed you, here, here it is right here, and there's plenty left over, um, so you can, you can use it for your steaks and then have some left over. But here's these lobsters. Um, again, 425 right after the fillets go in, and I'm going to pop those in. And uh, timing on those, you're looking at about 15 to 17 minutes. Again, um, all ovens are different. Uh, you really want to get that meat nice and firm. The shell will go from a, a, a darker brown to a nice bright red, and that's what you want to look at uh, when, when those tails are done. So can you tell us... Um, not maybe not specifically because I know it's probably a secret, but what is in that seasoning that you guys use? Uh, the seasoning. So we have a, a I, I truly can't even uh, name everything that's in here, um, <laughs> but the the basis of it. I mean, it's it's fairly simple. Um, you're looking at a couple different nice salts. You can see the flakiness of the salts. That's really uh, what drives the flavor. Um, and then our paprika. Paprika is known to uh, help the, the charring of different items. So it, it really helps the browning effect, the Maillard effect. 
um, in there. And then, you know, your typical peppers and, and garlic and stuff like that. All right, so what should you be doing while those things are in the oven? You don't have much longer on the steaks. Not too much longer. So I'm actually gonna start our uh, asparagus. So a little bit of canola oil, just a neutral oil. We go right down the middle. I notice you're using canola oil when I feel like um, it's, it's been pretty popular to use like olive oil or something. Can you explain why you're using canola oil? Yeah, so canola oil, especially when we're going to sear steaks, um, olive oil smoke point um, is a little bit lower than the canola oil. So when you, when you go to um, throw an olive oil in a pan at a super high heat where we're searing uh, our steaks, um, you're looking at uh, an off flavor that is that canola is not going to give you. Um, I, I personally love to use the olive oils, especially extra virgin olive oil for non cooking. So your salad dressings and different things like that. Really, it's a finishing oil. So you put it on last uh, on different things and you can really get the nuances of the different um, uh, brands and the different olives used in the olive oils. Okay. All right. But yeah, we just toss these right up. And that's got, a, again, a little bit of the ruby seasoning. You can uh, salt, pepper, um, you know, whatever you would like on here. And then again, these go right in the oven. Uh, bakes for about seven to 10 minutes. That can go right in there. Um, basically, everything's in the oven. At that point, you can start setting up everything else. Um, we've got four jumbo tiger shrimp that are coming with it. Uh, keep those in the fridge until you get most of the stuff cooking and going. And then you can set those out that comes with some cocktail sauce, um, lemon wedges. Yeah, so so shrimp. All... Those are huge. Put your hand next to it and show how big those are. <laughs> yeah, they're huge. Just about as big as my hand. I, um, I remember whenever it was 2019 when game day was in town, you guys did the food for that. And the size of the shrimp that you had down there, I swear, it was as big as the palm of those guys. And they're big guys. They're old football players. They're hands. Absolutely, yeah. Those are, those are our six, eight-count shrimp. Uh, it's, it's a great product. We've been using it for a long time. So we're, we're super happy with it. And people are always uh, uh, very excited to see them when they come out. All right. So Valentine's Day is actually on a weekend this year. So you're probably going to have people in-house at the restaurant as well. Are you guys preparing anything special for in-house guests also? Absolutely. So our, our pastry team has been uh, working very hard. And uh, each location has been uh, working on a, a feature dessert for the weekend uh, that will be um, at each location. So, um, yeah, we, we, ha we have some nice, uh, some pastries uh, coming up and, and, you know, anything that you can get on our regular menu. And then, uh, yeah, some nice champagnes and different things like that. I was going to ask, that was my next question. Any wine or um, champagne pairings that you recommend for this meal? Um, absolutely. With the surf and turf. Um, Wait, that was you know, unprompted. I did not know you guys had that there. <laughs> <laughs> We're always prepared. Nice. But yeah, we have, we have some nice reds. We have, we have some nice, uh, well, I see the move. Of course, that's bubbles. always a good recommendation. Yeah, absolutely. And then the good thing about these, if you're ordering online for the Valentine's kit, um, these wines online are 25% off. Oh, nice. Um, so that's a, that's a great promotion that we're running. Uh, so yeah, make sure to grab a bottle of uh, your favorite wine. But um, with the fillets and the lobster, I mean, really, you can go either way. Fillets obviously nice with a, a nice cab or a Pinot Noir, or you can go uh, the, the white with a Pinot Grigio um, and then finish it off with our uh, desserts and some champagne. So all three. You recommend us all three. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Those steaks, they probably are getting close to done, right? How often do you want to be checking them, or do you kind of want to keep that oven closed? So it's always good to have the oven closed. In true TV fashion, I have some other steaks that are- Oh man, the crew's eating good today, here. aren't you? Yeah, um, but no, you wanna keep the oven shut, but you definitely want, you definitely want to check it. Um, you know, the, the times that we give, we feel are, are pretty on point, but um, again, the ovens at home are a little different, but mm -hmm. yeah, about in the middle of cooking, you can get in there and if you wanna probe it with the temperature, uh, or with the thermometer um, halfway through and then you get a kind of a sense of where you're at and you know you can get a feeling of timing from there. All right, um, now give yeah, us recommend keeping the oven shut. All right, give us the true restaurant experience. How would you, the professional chef, plate all of this to make it look beautiful? That's what I'm going to go into next. So I'm getting ready nice. to plate right now. Have some beautiful lobster tails. Came out nice. See the firmness the of the parsley the meat. already. 
<laughs> yep, that's our nice herb butter and then the bright red on the shells and then a firmness on the uh, on the meat of there and it turns a nice bright white. So that's exactly what Oh, okay, exactly so that's the herb for. butter, okay. That's the herb butter, yeah. Wow, that looks good. And then we have our charred asparagus here. Nice. A little bit of that ruby seasoning, like I said, the paprika really gets a nice color on there. Then I've had some mashed potatoes in the warmer, but I heated those up a little bit on the stove. Nice. Um, and then our mashed potatoes. So yeah, start with your protein first. Okay. You want to go a little bit off to the side, mm -hmm. since you're going to have two proteins on the plate. That's when I'll come through with a little bit of our clarified butter that is also in the kit. Um, this is for finishing your filet and also finishing for your lobster, or you can dunk it as well uh, right into the butter. Can you explain what is clarified butter versus regular melted butter? So whole butter, um, the difference between whole and clarified, the clarified butter is actually you, it, the butter gets cooked um, and then the milk solids actually float to the top and you strain those milk solids off. So what you're left with is just straight, pure, um, golden, beautiful, tasty butter with none of the, the milky solids and any Soul. of the white in there. So it's a different flavor, it's, it's, it's clear. And then when you're going to cook, um, if you cook with clarified over whole, um, if you ever smell the toastiness of like a brown butter, mm -hmm. that's those milk solids toasting. Okay. So if you're ever going to sear a steak and you have some clarified butter, that's uh, it, with canola oil or clarified, I would use those interchangeably. Definitely. Okay, all right, thank you. Absolutely. So we'll go with our fresh lobster right next. This came out gorgeous. Again, just a touch of clarified on this. As you saw pre-baked, there was plenty of butter on there and that helps uh, the meat stay nice and tender. Oh man, I shouldn't have done this on a day I don't have time for a lunch break. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> That's right. Then we'll get a nice scoop of mash right here. That looks decadent. Then we'll finish with some asparagus right down the middle. We kind of fan that in between. Right there. Beautiful. So yeah, anytime you're plating, elevation is always good. If you can get height to your dishes, um, that's great. And then obviously colors and um, tightness. You know, you always want a void of color around the edge. Okay. Um, so that's a, that's a little pro tip when you're going to plate. You know, anything that's cleared out is uh, typically, um, you know, not as good as when you tighten it up and build up. So, so, so that presents really well. It's gorgeous. So sometimes I feel like whenever people think of fancy upscale restaurants, you think of maybe small portions. Definitely not the case with this kit. You're not going to be hungry after it. Definitely not. No, there's there's plenty of food in the kits um, and also in our restaurants. Yeah, we, we definitely uh, don't go light on the portions. Um, you know, we kind of meet in the middle of a, of a great portion, but yeah. then also the great service and the ambiance. Uh, they meet in the middle. Um, and, you know, obviously some great quality, some of the best quality beef that you can find for sure. It looks amazing. All right, last thing, show us the dessert. Absolutely. So we have our butter pie. Uh, this is our corporate pastry chef. Um, old, old recipe. I think it dates back to maybe his grandma's recipe. Um, and he's been tweaking that ever since. Um, I'll grab a plate here. And I'll plate one of these up for you. So I've been setting this out at room temperature for the last hour or so. Okay. So you can go two, you can go two ways with it. You can set it out, um, no problem at all. Um, it's, it's fully cooked and you can set it out and let it come up to room temperature as you're eating your dinner. Mm -hmm. um, that's completely fine. Or you can pop this box without the sauce and the crumble in the microwave for about 15 seconds. Um, and that will hold up just as fine as well. So we have a little strawberry balsamic glaze that goes right over top. Try to make this as beautiful as possible. Amazing. We'll just do a little bit on the plate. 
and then some nice crumble. So this is a shortbread crumble, strawberry crumble. Um, it's one of my favorite things by far that he makes. Um, but we take shortbread cookies, um, some pop rocks go in here, uh, and a little bit of strawberry gelatin. Um, and it just makes this super, super good crumble. Um, gives texture to the dish, gives color. The pop rocks give a little mouthfeel to it. Um, super, super cool. I feel like I learned so much today. Your pro tips with the plating, keeping it really in the center to keep it elevated. Gorgeous dessert there. Drying off the steak, that was something I didn't know. And then the canola oil, I didn't know that either, or the clarified butter. So I feel like I learned a lot um, from you today, Chef Nick. Thank you so much. Is there anything else we need to know about uh, this Valentine's Day? We've got all the information about how people can get a hold of those kits and what is included in them on our website, NBC4i.com, which is linked if you're watching on Facebook in the description of this. Yes, please show us again. So good. That looks amazing, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. All right, guys. Thank you again. All right, guys, like I said, NBC4i.com is where you can find all the information on how you can get your hands on these. We appreciate you being with us. Hopefully we can do some more in the future. We'll see you later. Bye.